Hello, welcome to this course uh, on Advanced Transport Phenomena, CL336, uh, for undergraduate students. My name is Jason Picardo and I'm a faculty in the Chemical Engineering Department at IIT Bombay. So this course, uh, as the name mentions, uh, is a second level course in Transport Phenomena, advanced relative to the first introductory course that undergraduates typically take in Chemical Engineering. Uh, for students of other departments, um, you could think of this as a course uh, after your preliminary courses in fluid mechanics and heat transfer, as mass transfer as well. So the goal of this course is to introduce undergraduate students to a secondary level or a more advanced level of concepts uh, in the field of transport phenomena, in particular when it comes to methods of modeling, uh, problems in transport, analyzing those models and trying to gain some insight from these models uh, short of direct simulation. Uh, so this is the first uh, lecture of the course uh, and in this introductory lecture uh, I would like to go over the objectives of the course and also in try to get you familiar with uh, different types of flows uh, that we are going to analyze in the course and uh, also show you some examples which will hopefully motivate you uh, and give you some perspective on why uh, it would be interesting to study this subject. Right, so the basic focus of the course is to look at how we can model and analyze transport problems, by which we mean problems involving uh, flow of a fluid and uh, concomitant heat and mass transport, as well as uh, accounting for the diffusive processes uh, that are going on. Uh, a focus of the course is not going to be simply on calculating and obtaining answers. Uh, rather, what we will try to do is to show how uh, or to learn how to think about such transport problems. Uh, by that I mean, uh, if you face a problem in transport, um, the goal of this course is to learn how to write down governing equations, uh, apply appropriate constitutive equations, and then analyze that model in such a way that we gain insight and understanding, uh, that we can ultimately take back to the problem of interest. Uh, in order to facilitate, facilitate this, uh, the strategy we will use is to work through several examples in considerable detail from the beginning to the end, so that you get a full perspective on how the problem is worked through step by step. Uh, of course, at the beginning of the course, we will start with some foundational uh, material including the basic principles, the governing equations and so on. Uh, but after that we will take a sequence of examples and each example will serve uh, as a vehicle to learn a new concept uh, and to progress in this fashion. Uh, another point to keep in mind is that the focus of the course will be on analytical methods uh, as opposed to direct numerical, uh, numerical simulations. Uh, the latter of course has its importance and increasingly so. Uh, nevertheless, uh, brute force numerical computations can, can't can really get you very far, especially when the goal is to understand a process. And so that's what we will be focusing on in this course, uh, how to gain understanding. And so several techniques uh, can typically be used and uh, these are some laid out here and this is what we will be covering in the course. First and foremost, the idea of scaling and non-dimensionalization of equations. Uh, that naturally leads us uh, to consider asymptotic methods and various approximation methods by which we can get approximate solutions to the equations uh, that give us some insight short of actually solving the full problem numerically. Uh, we'll do several such uh, problems using these techniques and towards the end of the course we will consider the stability of flows. Uh, this is both a beautiful aspect of fluid mechanics, uh, the fact that it a uh, same problem can have multiple solutions. Uh, each of these solutions possibly going unstable and giving rise to a new branch of solutions. Uh, but beyond that, the asymptotic methods that we will be using will lead to, yes, an approximate solution, which is a valid solution. However, there is no guarantee that this solution is actually what one would see in nature or industry or the experiment. Uh, because it's possible that these solutions could be unstable. Uh, the classic example is lamina flow through a pipe. Uh, you can derive this solution exactly and it is a solution for any flow rate through this pipe. However, as we all know and as Reynolds uh, first characterized, 
if you increase this flow rate sufficiently, the lamina solution is no longer realizable. In fact, it goes unstable. And what we eventually get is a turbulent flow, which is fully three-dimensional and time-dependent, and for which there is no analytical solution. Therefore, we shall consider some preliminaries of stability analysis. And throughout, we will try to maintain a close interplay between the mathematical methods that we are using and the physics of the problem. Indeed, such an interplay is essential and is demanded uh, by the use of methods like scaling and asymptotics. Uh, finally, before we proceed, uh, it's important to keep in mind that the scope of this course, uh, given our limited time, will be restricted to lamina flows. Uh, we shan't really discuss turbulent flows at all. We will focus only on single phase flows, which means two phase flows and so on uh, will be beyond our scope. Uh, but what we will do is make time to look at coupled heat and mass transfer uh, and flow problems, by which I mean the flow of the fluid will certainly affect the distribution of, let's say, temperature or concentration through convective effects. And the concentration will feed back into the flow, for example, by changing uh, the viscosity of the fluid if the viscosity is temperature dependent. Uh, or by changing the density of the fluid if the density is temperature dependent and so on. Here I want to give you some examples of uh, interesting flows that you encounter in nature and some in industry uh, that show very clearly uh, the relevance of the subject of fluid mechanics and transport uh, and why it's important. One can think about chemical reactors where we have flow and input and output of uh, materials, reactants and products can think of distillation columns, you can think of uh, effluents that are released into the environment and how these have to be treated and so on. Uh, and of course more recently there's a focus on uh, uh, micro scale devices, microfluidics, um, microchips for diagnostics and testing uh, and so on. Uh, all of which involve the controlled controlling the flow of a fluid uh, controlling the transport of material, enhancing the transport of material and so on. Uh, next when it comes to problems in health, uh, transport and fluid mechanics plays a big role, uh, not just in uh, techniques of uh, diagnosing or treatment, uh, but also in the very basic mechanisms by which uh, certain diseases can propagate. Indeed, uh, even as I make this uh, video, uh, we have this COVID-19 uh, uh, increasingly spreading uh, and this is a major issue that we have to deal with and presumably in the future as well uh, issues of uh, disease transmission will remain highly relevant and a significant challenge uh, to face as, as a community. Uh, here clearly uh, fluid mechanics has a big role to play in how uh, the virus is transmitted uh, as it's uh, recognized to be transmitted through droplets that are ejected when a person coughs, sneezes, or in fact even talks. And this is just one example where fluid mechanics uh, and understanding fluid mechanics is highly relevant. And uh, a third point here, of course, is uh, climate, uh, increasing climate change and how to deal with that, how to deal with uh, uh, controlling the amount of carbon dioxide by carbon sequestration. Uh, all of this involves fluid mechanics. Of course, the climate models which are used to try and project the impact of increasing uh, greenhouse gases are fundamentally based on the Navier-Stokes equations uh, for the flow of air in the atmosphere, uh, water in the ocean, and so on. So one can go on enumerating such uh, deeply important, significant uh, examples of uh, why it's important to understand uh, fluid mechanics and transport. But beyond all of this, uh, one must keep in mind that, oh, as you will realize as we go through this course, that transport phenomena is indeed a beautiful subject. Uh, I say this both in terms of the subject matter, uh, by which I mean the very flows themselves have an intrinsic beauty, uh, as anyone who's been to a waterfall, stared at the clouds, uh, in fact even looked at a cyclone forming uh, uh, through beautiful images of, from NASA and other space agencies, uh, will recognize that uh, flows uh, are beautiful in their patterns, and the myriad ways in which they manifest themselves. Uh, but beyond that, and as you will see in this course, even the methods of analysis, the mathematical techniques that are used uh, have, have a beauty of their own. And the way those mathematical techniques 
uh, work in correspondence with physical ideas is truly something uh, joyful to uh, to apprehend and to work with. Uh, so, instead of going further, we will now consider some examples, uh, and I will uh, allow the screen to take over completely. Right. So, let's start with uh, a technological example, uh, something uh, that's of relevant to industry and especially to chemical engineering. So, what we will consider is a gas liquid uh, film contractor. So, let me just play this video. Yes, so here's a video from uh, the company GEA, uh, which shows a falling film evaporator. And as you can see, they're showing a nice cut section at the top. So the idea is that liquid uh, is allowed to flow in over the top, where it flows through a whole bunch of cylindrical tubes, uh, while air flows uh, from the bottom. And uh, the outside of the tubes are heated so that the liquid evaporates off. The key point is that the liquid on the inner side of the tube forms a film and flows down as a free film as you can see here. Notice also the waves that form on this film. Uh, these actually form through a fluid dynamic instability and those waves increase mass transfer. Yes, this is just showing you how the pipes are being heated externally. Uh, allowing liquid to evaporate from the center. The key point is here that in this configuration you really have a flow of a thin liquid film. Uh, on one side it sees a wall and the other side it sees uh, air into which it is evaporating. Uh, so a key aspect of the problem here is to understand how the film flows and especially uh, why and how we develop these waves that are shown here purely schematically of course this is not a direct simulation. Uh, in this video. All right, so uh, there's been several efforts to try and understand the development of waves uh, on the surface of a falling film, uh, motivated by the fact that these waves have the potential to increase mass transport between the film and the air. And one such uh, recent hallmark paper is that by uh, Dietze and Riochil in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics, the year 2013, uh, where they modeled this problem in two dimensions, as shown here in the schematic. So you have two walls, you have liquid flowing along the left wall as a thin film and it adjoins uh, uh, air on the right. And in the simplified uh, 2D geometry, uh, the problem is simplified, yes, uh, in dimension, uh, but the basic physics is still incorporated. Uh, and that's a hallmark of such uh, kinds of models because it allows you uh, to gain some insight in a simpler setting. So. Uh, this plot just shows you the predictions from the model, uh, which are the solid lines and the dots are actually numerical experiments. So you can see they work quite well. But what I want you to focus on here is how the fluid mechanics impacts the mass transfer and why understanding the mechanics of the flow in detail can actually help us in understanding how to improve and how to design the system to improve mass transfer. So this is from a more recent paper of 2019 of uh, Georg Dietzer, where he studies the mass transport in that kind of a film under different conditions of different flow rates. So the first picture you see here is a case where the film, where the flow rate of the film is so low that the surface of the film is perfectly flat. This is sort of the analog of the purely unidirectional flow solution that one sees in pipe flow. But as we know, as the flow rate increases, the pipe flow, unidirectional pipe flow goes unstable. The same will apply here. As the flow rate of the film increases, eventually its surface goes unstable and it starts forming waves. But in this case where the flow, flat flow is stable, you see that uh, mass transfer proceeds relatively slowly. Uh, that can be visualized by this color gradient. So essentially there is the air is supposed to contain a solute which dissolves into the liquid and the concentration is shown by the color uh, where red shows high concentration and blue shows uh, low concentration. So you can see that the solute is diffusing into the film 
uh, from its top surface rather slowly uh, and purely diffusively and so the uh, and there is a strong boundary layer near the surface and the solute is entering into the liquid uh, quite slowly but now at a higher flow rate the liquid film begins to form waves and the moment you see these waves uh, what you notice is that there is significantly faster uh, and deeper penetration of the solute into the liquid uh, this is driven by mass transfer enhancement due to convection associated with the circulations that are formed below each of these waves uh, so you can see it more clearly here uh, under each wave uh, crest there is actually a vortex and that vortex pulls uh, or disrupts the boundary concentration boundary layer so it brings solute that just enters the film at the surface it carries that solute deep into the liquid uh, because of the presence of this vortex uh, as the waves pro propagate so now uh, Georg had an idea that okay we have some amount of mass transfer enhancement due to the intrinsic fluid dynamic instability uh, but what about increasing this further uh, by develop by imposing corrugations on the bottom wall now this is an old idea which has been done uh, and tried out before uh, both in experiments and modeling but the presence of uh, or the ability of his of uh, this particular model to predict the dynamics very well very accurately uh, allows uh, one to be more rational in the design so here's the first case where you use a typical kind of uh, high wavelength corrugation so you can see that the corrugation imposes its features on the free surface of the film and there is some amount of mass transfer enhancement especially if you look at the end of the film where you see that there is a significant uh, increase in the amount of solute uh, that penetrates the liquid film however you can go one step further which is what is done in this paper you see by understanding the details of the physics of this vortex that forms uh, below each crest and how exactly it's pulling in plumes of concentration of solute into the film uh, one gets the idea or rather Georg gets the idea to instead of instead of just imposing some random frequency of uh, corrugation what about imposing a feature that exactly acts at the same wavelength of the waves of the film that's what's done here so you see that there are bumps imposed along the film uh, at the same wavelength of the instability uh, of the natural wavelength of the film and what happens is that these bumps serve to pull in plumes in a more efficient way uh, than the earlier corrugation scheme and the consequence is you have even better mass transfer as is clear if you look at uh, the color contours at the end of the film in the two cases all right uh, here we can see a video of the same thing so you see that in the case of the fat film uh, there is some amount of entrainment of the liquid plumes of the oh, sorry of the solute plumes but that's significantly advanced uh, or becomes much faster when you have multiple corrugations that's what you see here as the crest moves over each corrugation it pulls in a new plume of uh, solute and then finally the case where you have the carefully located bump you see as the plume rides over the bump it disrupts that plume and generates further let's say uh, intrusions of the solute into the liquid and that's what enhances mass transfer even further uh, so all this example shows clearly is that by using detailed methods of analysis and modeling uh, and understanding the detailed fluid mechanics of a problem can help you design a better system a more optimized uh, flow system be it a reactor a separator or in this case a falling film evaporator